everyone, it's Franz from MedMastery again. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever tried out the Valsalva maneuver in a patient who was in supraventricular tachycardia? Yes? Well, then you probably also experienced that the response rate is pretty low. It's 5 to 20% according to the literature. Well, there is something that's called the modified Valsalva maneuver that has a much higher efficacy. And that's what this study review is all about. So check it out. These are the findings of the so-called REVERT trial. Its full title is Postural Modification to the Standard Valsalva Maneuver for Emergency Treatment of Supraventricular Tachycardia, a randomized controlled trial by Andrew Applebaum et al. The trial was published in August 2015 in the prestigious Lancet. It was carried out in 10 emergency departments in the southwest of England. Patients were eligible if they had supraventricular tachycardia but were excluded if they were in atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter, or if they had an indication for electrical cardioversion. So they ended up with 433 patients who met these criteria, 216 of whom were in the standard Valsalva group, and 217 were in the modified Valsalva group. Now, you probably ask yourself, what in God's name is the modified Valsalva? Well, don't be so impatient. You'll know in a minute. So, patients in the standard and the modified groups were told to blow into a tube that was attached to an aneroid manometer for 15 seconds. That's basically the same manometer that's used in a standard blood pressure cuff. You probably don't use this type of device when you let your patients perform a Valsalva. It was used in this study in order to ensure a consistent and measurable strain exerted by the patient. People in both groups were sitting in a semi-recumbent position while they were blowing into the tube, as shown here. The standard group folks were then told to just simply remain in that position for another 45 seconds, whereas the modified group folks were laid flat on their backs and had their legs raised by a member of staff to 45 degrees for 15 seconds and were then returned to the semi-recumbent position again. One minute after initiating the intervention, an ECG was obtained to see if sinus rhythm had been re-established. So, sinus rhythm at one minute was the primary outcome. Interesting secondary outcomes were the use of adenosine and the use of any emergency antiarrhythmic treatment including adenosine. So here are the results. Sinus rhythm occurred in 17% of patients in the standard group versus 43% in the modified group. So, the rate of sinus rhythm increased by two and a half times with the new maneuver. Can you believe it? What's the p-value for that? That was below 0.0001. Highly significant. What about the use of adenosine following Valsalva? Well, 69% of patients in the standard group received adenosine versus 50% in the modified group. A 28% reduction. P-value 0.0002. And finally, 80% of patients in the standard group received any antiarrhythmic treatment including adenosine versus 57% in the modified group. So another reduction of 29%. P-value below 0.0001. Also highly significant. You might say to yourself, well, I don't have this aneroid manometer thing, so how in the world should I reproduce these findings? Here's how. So remember, the aneroid manometer was used in order to ensure a consistent and measurable strain exerted by the patient. Well, it turns out that you don't really need this type of equipment. There's a much simpler approach. The authors suggested that letting the patient blow into a 10 milliliter syringe to just move the plunger for 15 seconds generates a similar pressure and strain. So a 10 milliliter syringe is really all you need. So I hope you'll try out this maneuver next time you see a patient with supraventricular tachycardias. If you want to become a true expert on supraventricular tachycardias, how to differentiate them on the ECG, how to recognize AFib, how to recognize atrial flutter, then I suggest you check out the ECG Mastery Program Blue Belt section where we will bring you up to speed and teach you how to diagnose over 95% of rhythm problems without the help of a more senior colleague. With that being said, stay tuned for more and I'll talk to you soon.